Well, I think it was interesting how he his prediction came true within about an hour that there would be other charges. Yeah, that was uh, pretty obvious to me. And uh, quite frankly, I think the the commentary that came out pretty much after the indictment uh, was released, uh, you know, was uh, reflecting that. Uh, and I think the DOJ uh, has decided in real time, well, let's just say, you know, that the, that other uh, charges are likely, you know, because uh, their their strategy, their their plan is so obvious. Everyone is calling it out uh, that they, you know, now decided to already confirm that they are uh, considering other charges. So that was pretty much uh, the game plan, you know, try and get an extradition done with a single simple charge and maybe you know, based on five years so that Ecuador can look okay. Moreno can say, hey, it's not all that bad. You know, he's not going to get life. It's just five years. And, uh, you know, Theresa May can say, look, uh, it's, it's, it's not as bad as Julian has always said. But the reality is if he ever gets extradited, he'll never see uh, the outside of uh, prison again. And that's why it is so important that this extradition case is won. And there, there are three ways to win it for Julian. One is with a change of government, because I don't think Labour is going to do what uh, Theresa May's government is doing. We know that Corbyn doesn't like what uh, is happening to uh, Julian Assange. So a change of government could happen well, uh, during the time uh, uh, that this whole extradition process is running. The second chance, I believe, is the Supreme Court, not any of the lower courts. All the lower court judges will be handpicked to deliver a predetermined outcome. He will not have a fair hearing. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, you will not find any revolutionary judge in the lower courts who is suddenly going to say, nah, we're not going to extradite uh, Julian Assange. So the Supreme Court is really where, you know, the highest court uh, in the UK is really where this case will be decided. And then ultimately, of course, the minister will have to give final approval. So after the court process is exhausted, it goes to the minister and then the minister has to say, hey, uh, you know, we are extraditing or we are not. And uh, that is another whole process because then whatever the minister says can be judicially reviewed. And, uh, um, you know, so th there are a couple of avenues for Julian to show that there, uh, number one, there is no case. The indictment is so weak, it's actually laughable. Uh, that there is no um, conspiracy simply because of that one chat that they made where these people, Manning and Assange, hardly knew each other. And all that Julian uh, was interested in is to get as much information to publish as possible. And that's what every journalist does with their sources. It's not unusual. So I think the, the U.S. government will have a really hard time, uh, based on the current indictment, to show a prima facie case of anything that would be illegal in the UK. And that's also very important in this case. There's a requirement of dual criminality. Is what the US government is alleging in their indictment criminal in the United Kingdom? If it is not, then Julian Assange cannot be extradited. And from what I've seen, my legal analysis after reading the indictment is, I don't see the illegality in the United Kingdom. The only thing that's in there is, 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 is the conspiracy. But the conspiracy needs to, can only survive if it's underlying a real crime. So, you know, a crime has to be committed and then two people or more have to agree to it. But the crime that has been, uh, uh, that has uh, he has been charged with is the underlying crime. If there is no such crime, then there can't be any conspiracy. It's very similar to my case, you know. So uh, Julian has very capable lawyers, and I think now that he has been arrested, 
There will be others coming forward, some QCs, some really sharp legal minds that are going to be in Julian's corner and fight for him. That is why it is so important that we are now helping uh, with our money as well, with donations, so that uh, he can build the strongest possible legal team and, and take the fight to the US government, to the UK courts. And through discovery also, I'm pretty sure that Assange's legal team uh, now has new avenues to find evidence that uh, you know there, there was actual collusion between the UK, Sweden, and the United States, and uh, that you know by doing the steps that they have taken, they have completely tainted the entire judicial process, and that's another way for Julian to get out. So you know I'm not uh, seeing it as dark as Chris earlier, where he's like, you know, gone and tortured. I think he has a very capable legal team. I think there are still judges in the highest court in the UK that would be independent because they are at the peak of their career. They have nothing more to gain. They are already on the top of the, of the food chain. So if they have any... Uh, you know, morality and they care about the rule of law, they're going to look at this case of Julian Assange very carefully. I wouldn't write this whole thing off yet. But here's the thing. The important thing, the U.S. empire already now has what they wanted to achieve. They wanted Julian to be locked up. They wanted him to be offline. Uh, they wanted him to, you know, they wanted just to make sure that he can't uh, publish himself anymore, that he's not uh, available anymore to whistleblowers. And they have achieved that already now without a trial. You know, they have him locked up. He will be locked up for many years fighting uh, this extradition. He is not going to get bail because uh, uh, he has uh, breached his bail before. So, uh, you know, in, in a way, the U.S. empire has already achieved what they wanted. It's just he's not yet in a U.S. jail where they have total control over him. But the U.K. is, uh, you know, is going to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, Julian will stay in jail. You know, Susie Rose, the, uh, the issue of torture. And you would have to think they want to get his sources, don't they? Isn't that something they want to learn? Yes, but think about this. You know, this is a high-profile case. If there was anything like this happening to Julian, uh, the lawyers would clearly uncover that. And, and, you know, they are sophisticated. You know, the lawyers of Julian are very sophisticated. Julian himself is going to be his best lawyer because he understands everything that is happening to him in this whole case better than anybody. Do not underestimate the intellect of Julian Assange and his legal team. They are going to give them a fight. You know, we just need to give the legal team the oxygen. You know, we need to make sure they have yeah. enough money so that, uh, you know, they can really rely on high-end QCs or, or whatever who are going to make this case in the courts. And, you know, with every stage... And every appeal that they're going through, they're going to refine their argument, find more to add to the defense. And ultimately, when they get to the Supreme Court, I think they will have a very compelling case. And I think the court will have to be completely corrupt to extradite them to the United States. And throughout this whole process, the eyes of the world will be on this case. It will not be easy for anybody to torture Julian Assange without a song. They may try some psychological things. They may try to keep him from reading stuff or put him, put him in, in solitary. I'm almost certain he will be in solitary, uh, you know, and through that uh, break him. But if his lawyers are smart, they're going to arrange for frequent visits. They can visit him daily. They can see him for two, three hours a day. They can, you know, potentially bring him some uh, nice sandwiches and, and stuff like that. So it's not all as dark as Chris uh, explained it. And I can tell that I can tell you that from my own experience. 
You know, if you are if you are sophisticated. You can beat the U.S. government because one thing I can tell you about them, they are not sophisticated. You know, they're actually quite dumb in the way they structure their cases and in the way they lie. And then they get found out about their lying and their trickery. And they just look bad. They are a bully. You know, they are so powerful. They don't need to pay attention to the detail. They just push things through. And uh, by taking that approach, they often expose themselves uh, to... Uh, you know, issues that can then later be used in court. So I wouldn't write this off at all. I think this will be a very, very interesting legal battle and Julian and his legal team are going to really take the fight uh, to them. And in the process, uh, you know, there will be a lot of exposures and a lot of uh, issues raised. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm actually, you know, like I said, I'm always trying to find something positive in a situation like this. And what's positive to me is that we are finally going to test this US case. This indictment is going to be toast. I've looked at it. I, I have experience with things like this. It's, it's, it's uh, right now, I don't see how the US uh, is going to win this unless there's uh, corruption involved. There is a statement from Julian's Ecuadorian lawyer um, that has just been released that says they didn't have the right to a defense, even though the law stipulates that prior to the termination of asylum, there ought to be an interview with the asylee, but that did not happen, which is a violation of the Ecuadorian law surrounding revocation of asylum. Kim, you talked about the same law has to exist in the UK as it does in the US. Yeah. And it might it's, be even, because like called, your case- It's called dual criminality. Yeah, because in your case, uh, copyright law in, in New Zealand is a civil, uh, infraction and it's criminal in the U.S., so that uh, obviously didn't work. But uh, the U U.K. has the Official Secrets Act, which is even stronger than that section of the Espionage Act, which crim incriminates publishing that anyone who holds classified matter and has it and then disseminates it or just has it uh, could be liable for prosecution. So I wonder if the Official Secrets Act might play a role here. That's a big discussion, but I just uh, just came to mind. You know, you need to think about uh, what's happening here, right? The U.S. government had many years to prepare this indictment. This is not something, you know, no. that uh, happened yesterday. So they had many years to work on this. And the best thing that they put forward now is this wishy-washy nonsense nothingness, okay? That's really what you have to call it. It's a joke. It's a joke of an indictment, okay? So right now, with what we have, what we can see, the charges are, uh, you know, th they need to find an equivalent uh, crime in the UK. And I, right now, my initial analysis is I don't see that, okay? Mm. Now, they may follow up after this arrest has already happened and all that with a superseding indictment and add something that is... Uh, uh, going to make the extradition process a bit easier. But I think that is why they need Manning now. You yeah. know, they need something more, something else. All these years that they have been working to put this case together, what they have shown, the hand that they have shown is weak, absolutely weak. And if they don't get more, if this is the indictment that they are trying to extradite him on, they, there is a chance that Julian may uh, win because it's weak. It's a joke. A conspiracy to breach a password? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, you know, when I read that, I couldn't believe it. It's, it's, I mean, my indictment was a joke, but his indictment is the joke of jokes. So, you know, it's not all bad. Julian is going to get healthcare now, uh, you know, they, the UK government is not uh, going to torture him or do anything uh, to him that uh, will later uh, bite them. You know, this is a high profile case. Uh, you know, Julian will be visited by human rights organizations, by the UN rapporteur. They are all going to uh, want to know what's happening to him. So the UK government will be well advised to make sure that Julian gets great health care, that he gets exercise, that he gets sunlight, 
good, a good healthy diet, a, a lot of, uh, you know, lawyer visits, legal visits, uh, and friends and family visiting him, you know, anything other than that is really going to backfire for the UK government. And I think they know that. So they're going to, they are going to want to be seen to be a good actor in all of this. So while Julian is still in the UK, there's hope. Once he gets to the US, the, the case is lost. There's no justice there. The courts are kangaroo courts. It's a complete joke. Uh, you know, everyone who, who knows the U.S. justice system will tell you uh, that there he will actually be tortured. He will actually be um, in solitary confinement. And they are going to make his life miserable to punish him for the embarrassment that uh, Julian has caused to the U.S. Uh, on the global stage. You know, I don't think there's any single person in history uh, that has caused so much embarrassment to the United States uh, than Julian Assange. And, and they punish and, thre and threaten their interests even more than uh, embarrassing them. <laughs>